Today we'll be creating a simple test file in Fusion 360. Fusion can be pretty overwhelming for the beginner, so I highly recommend looking at some of the tutorials offered by Fusion, as well as some content creators on YouTube. So we'll start with our top view. And we will go to insert our DXF file, which is available for download from our website. Now we select our top plane and our DXF file, which will be stepcraft dash test dash file dot dxf and when we open that it should appear on our work area now to double check that it's to scale we can select one line and select the opposing line and we see there is a width of six inches our work project will be six inches by six inches with a depth of a quarter inch now the next thing we're going to do is extrude the piece out and make a three-dimensional model So we go to create and extrude, and then home view, and we select the plane that we want to extrude. You can hold shift to select multiple pieces of a drawing. Now we want to input our value here. Uh, it's going to be negative since we're moving down, which allows us to actually view the sketch as it's on top of the workpiece. We can do that by highlighting this little light bulb here. So now we can see our, essentially it's our stock now. So we can select the face that we want to pocket out in our cam operation and do another extrude movement. The difference here is that instead of adding material, we're taking away. So that's a cut operation. and we're extruding down 0.125 inches, or an eighth of an inch. Turn off our sketch, and this is what our final project will look like. We've created a fully three-dimensional model, and from here, we will move into the cam portion of Fusion. Now that we've finished our model, we can move into our cam. So the first thing we want to do is make a setup. So click Setup, and if your model doesn't look like this with the axes in the correct orientation, there's a pretty simple way to fix that. Uh, so I like to go to Top View, and then go to Orientation, select X, Y axes. Our X can be our horizontal line and our Y can be our vertical and you simply select those by clicking any straight lines. Now if your Z is reversed simply click on the arrow and it should flip itself. Before we move forward we want to make sure that the Z is actually at the top of our workpiece otherwise the spindle will plunge through the material and that's pretty simple to do by going to a side view so we can kind of see where everything is and we want to move it up currently it's at the bottom of our workpiece or the bed of the machine uh, so we want to go to stock point and select a box point and we want to move it to the top see now it would be in the middle Now this is important to make sure that your stock point is at the top of your workpiece as if it's set incorrectly your spindle will end up plunging directly through your workpiece. This can cause damage to your project as well as the tool bit. Now that our setup is complete, I like to change the units from inches to millimeters because I do a lot of my feeds and speeds in metric values. From here, we're ready to create our toolpath. So there are a lot of complex toolpaths. We're just doing a 2D pocket operation. So first, it will ask you to select your tool. You can hit select. Now, we will have a separate video on how to create a tool in Fusion. For now, I already have a tool pre-made for this operation. So our spindle speed is very important. We want a spindle speed of 16,000 RPM. On the MM1000, that is a setting between four and five. 
our feed rate is 1200 millimeters per minute and our feed per tooth is 0 0.0375 millimeters. Our lead in and lead out feed rates can remain the same, simply 200 millimeters per minute less than our cutting feed rate, and our ramp and plunge feed rates can remain the same as well once we've taken care of those important values. The next step is the geometry of our 2D pocket operation. Now for our pocket selection, we can simply select the face that we want to pocket out and click that. Now we might get something that looks like this. This will actually not affect the toolpath in any way. It's just a byproduct of importing DXF files that sometimes happens. The important selection are these blue lines. Now we can move to passes. We want to do a conventional cut and something really neat about Fusion, it actually allows us to hover over something and it will explain what it does. We want a single finishing pass. with a step over below the full diameter of your cutting tool. Our finish feed rate can stay the same. Now we want to make multiple depths as we don't want it to take the whole depth in one pass. And our maximum roughing step down is 1.875 millimeters or a sixteenth of an inch. We want one finishing step down, and we can do a finishing step down of 0.02 millimeters. We only want a finishing pass on our last pass depth, and we want a roughing final as it will rough the final pass depth and then take a finishing pass. Once that's done, we can move to smoothing, and that can be done with a 0.01 millimeter tolerance. Now most of the things can remain as they were originally in our last tab here. We just want to make sure that we preserve our rapid movement and that we select keep the tool down as much as possible. Now on ramp we just want to make sure it's on a helix and everything else can stay the same. Once we hit OK, it should generate our toolpath. And now we have a fully rendered, fully generated toolpath to work with. From here, we can actually simulate what that's going to look like by right clicking our operation and then selecting Simulate. I like to make my tooling transparent. Now I like to change my stock to plastic vinyl. And machining time in statistics gives you a, a rough estimate. It can be incorrect sometimes, but it's a good indicator of how long a project will take. The slider at the bottom of the page will control how fast the simulation displays the toolpath that you've selected. So we can start to slowly see our project take shape here, and now it's taking that finishing pass. We can turn our cam component off, and now we can see our finished project. Once we've checked the simulation and made sure that everything is according to plan, we will be ready to create the G code, which we will upload to our StepCraft machine. Now we can select Post Process at the top of the page. Now by default, Fusion will not have a post processor for the StepCraft machine, however downloading one is relatively simple. Simply go to the link above and enter into the search bar StepCraft. Once you find StepCraft UCCNC, select Download and Save File. This will save as a .cps file. Now to make this process a little bit simpler, we can go back to Fusion 360 and in our post process, we can select setup and use a personal post process.
This will allow us to copy this file location and paste it into the download, allowing that .cps file to go directly into our personal post-processor folder. Now it will not appear by default. You'll actually want to cancel your post process and reselect it. Then go to setup and personal post library and we should have our Stepcraft post processor appear by default. Once that's all set, you can select post and it will prompt us for a file location. I'll call my file stepcraft test file and save it to my desktop. This file will save as a .nc file. Once you've saved it, you are ready to load it into UCCNC and run your first project.